You're listening to Wild Things and Wild Places, a Muley Fanatic Foundation podcast that aims to discuss issues and efforts related to the Muley Fanatic Foundation mission, the conservation of mule deer, furthering the sport of hunting, and sound wildlife management. Everybody knows I'm a Muley Fanatic. It's time for Wild Things and Wild Places. And here's your guide, Joshua Corsi. And hey, welcome to another episode of Wild Things and Wild Places. And big week ahead of us, Mule Deer Days, coming up this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'm glad to be able to introduce someone that will be on hand. And uh, I'm talking about Cody Robbins. Welcome, Cody. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. I'm really excited to be here. And I, am, I too, am very excited about Mule Deer Days. Yeah, it's going to be... An, it, it, I don't know. I, I'm lacking the vocabulary to put the right adjective for... Th- that really would summarize how great this event is going to be. Certainly, we are proud and uh, very honored and humbled to have you be a part of this and to be there for the three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. But Cody, before we get into some of the particulars of Mule Deer Days and some of the seminars that you're going to be given, I I wanted to talk a little bit about something that launched last week, an effort that we've had some time and effort collaboratively to put together a video that you and your cameraman Richie had produced. I included some of our volunteers with in the organization, but uh, the video, we are MFF. And, and what does that mean when you hear those words? We are MFF. To start off, I am so honored to be part of a team. I get long-winded talking about, you ask me a simple question and I, I'm going to go deep. Being a part of a team, one of my favorite things in life is people. And beyond that, deeper in its own bracket, I love being a part of a team. I don't know how many times playing hockey growing up, you go into a dressing room at the start of the year and you're sitting on a bench and you're getting dressed and you're being quiet and polite. You don't know anyone else in that room. And there's guys walking in that are obviously going to be a part of your new team. And they're walking in and they're sitting down and they're talking to people they already know. And your mind is racing. You sit and you think about that. Well, that guy doesn't dress my style. He's not my type of guy. That guy, how can that guy be a good hockey player? He's not built right for it. And your, your mind is judging so much. And I love the way life has taught me stop my mind and quit judging and how many times I have judged someone and thought they're not my kind of person and then two years later being a part of a team does this for you how awesome you can work together as a team and do good things and how a stranger that day on day one could be someone that you would freaking die for a year down the road and that's what being a part of a team does for you I love being a part of a team the camaraderie the, the way you band together to find a way to win. And it doesn't have to be being a part of a hockey team or a football team or a baseball team. It can be the MFF, a bunch of people that are all on the same page about mule deer. They're passionate about mule deer. They don't just want to go out in November and enjoy the species they love and then go home and forget about them. They want to give back. And mule deer have done so much for me in my life it changed my direction completely. I wanted to be a hockey player. That's, that was my dream. The same millions of kids have a dream to be a professional sports athlete. And it's not very realistic. You got to have the right genes. You got to be athletic. You got to be the right size. So many things have to work out for you. And as I was a young teenager growing up, my dream shifted. It went from being a professional athlete that wasn't realistic for me. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I loved mule deer so much. I loved all wild animals so much, but particularly I really loved mule deer. I was passionate about them. And my dream shifted to try and somehow find a way to make my living in the outdoors. And I'm lucky. I'm lucky that I fell in love with mule deer. Saskatchewan has some of the greatest mule deer on earth. And it's given me the chance to share stories about what you would call once in a lifetime bucks. And people love to sit and watch and, enjoy a story about a deer that's their dream deer too. And hopefully someday they can live a moment like that. And and our show gives them that chance to kind of live that dream until it happens for them. And mule deer and all of that has given me the opportunity to follow my dreams and succeed at what I really wanted to be as a kid once I grew up. So the chance to have a spot on this team and wear the colors of the MFF is huge to me. I am so honored and so excited to try and help as much as I possibly can and also to get to know other people, just like sitting in that dressing room, to 
get to know other people that are on the same page as I am. People that love mule deer and people that want to make a difference and people that want to help a species that need it right now. I am super pumped about it. If I could reciprocate the same gratefulness and thankfulness uh, for you to come on board. Uh, we put a lot of thought into before we decided that this was the right step for us, an organization like ours, even 12 years in the making, we knew that there was an opportunity that eventually would present itself where we could have the level of outreach or the platform, if you will, to be, to be able to really get the message out about the efforts of MFF, what the mission is, how the model of how we function is organized and designed. And you were a perfect fit. And I'm very appreciative that you were willing to have that conversation, that we could come to the idea that we're in this together. I think that's the one ingredient ingredient that seems to be lacking when I look at the conservation community from a 30,000 foot view is there are a ton of passionate outdoors men and women that love the outdoors, that love hunting, our hunting heritage. They know they have a role and a stewardship responsibility within that arena. And how can we as a community of people have that voice to be able to get stuff done and really on our time of the timeline of history make a difference and i think that's what i think that's what we all share is a common thread or is the bind that keeps us together that can do great things when we are together and i'm very grateful that you see that i'm very grateful that you recognize that this is a team effort we can't do it alone and we can do a lot more when we do it together yeah and so i i guess more than anything i just want to say thanks i just want to say thank you for just the the purity that you bring to this effort. Effort. There are a lot of volunteers within this organization, this organization with the chapters that it has in multiple areas. We don't know all of them. Each We know the folks that lead these efforts, but the people that come and support these efforts as well. You tend to know the people that are involved leading the effort, but it's the people that support it too that are just as critical. And I think anybody that wears that badge of honor that can refer to themselves or know in their heart that I'm proud to be a hunter and what that means, I, I think this is a, a great opportunity for folks who already probably have some familiarity with you, the closeness and the inner workings that we've already had this year at a couple of events, Mule Deer Days coming up. You're very approachable, and I know folks will want to visit with you. You've had a you've had a pretty good run in the world of mule deer hunting, and I think that when you think of if you put a human being next to the thought of a mule deer hunter. With the records and the success and the storytelling, you're an incredible storyteller. You have a knack for that. I think it's a skill set that is God-given, but you've also honed it yourself. And then to be able to share this and do this with your wife, Live to Hunt is an incredible program. You're living a dream that many, I'm sure, just admire. But man, I'm so glad that you're part of MFF. So thank you for that. I All I can say to that, Josh, is I am just as grateful. I it, all of the kind words that you just spoke mean the world to me. It gives me pins and needles listening to it. And, and I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to give me this chance. I'm excited. I came down to the 10 Country chapter, and I, before I spoke, watching a team of individuals who are passionate about Mule Deer getting ready for their events, trying to raise money for Mule Deer, it, it's so motivational and so inspiring to see the people and their selfless act to do more and raise money for a good cause. But there's so many people that go out and enjoy them in November, or they may go out and may enjoy them in April when they want to go find a beautiful, big, dark shed antler laying on the side of a ridge. And then they turn it off and they, and they forget. And that, that's okay. I totally understand. People have busy lives. This is a chance for passionate nuclear hunters or passionate nuclear people to band together and create an army and grow as much as we possibly can to help give back because mule deer are in trouble right now. They're, I know in Saskatchewan, it, it's hard for me to talk about. It really, I, honestly, I get choked up and I'm, I'm going to make sure that I don't right now. But they have changed my life so much and they're, the mule deer in our country have always been and always thriving and almost like they've been kept improving and the populations have gotten healthier. Everything has gotten better in my lifetime watching mule deer. And then all of a sudden, in the last five years, I believe it's CWD. I, I don't know what else it is. I know we've had really harsh winters. We've had crazy snowfall. We've had crazy conditions. Maybe it's all of those things combined. Maybe it's the CWD. Maybe it's the snow. Maybe it's the temperatures. I know mule deer are tough. They can survive a lot, and they can push through a world of bad things. But 
I'm watching the population in our area right now plummet. I, I can't find the big old giant bucks that I used to be able to find. And this is on a place where I've lived my life hunting on public land, where it doesn't matter how bad the hunting pressure is in the fall, there's always big, cagey, old nine-year-old bucks that slip through the cracks. They're there. You're never going to get them all. And they're, that's what I admire so much about mule deer. If I ever hear a person say that mule deer are dumb, they've never hunted a big, old, mature buck before. They don't have a clue. Right now, with our population, how down it is, you can go to the wintering grounds and stay back a mile or two away with your spotting scope and you can watch. And you just can't find those big, old, pot-bellied, swayback bucks. And from what I've learned and what I've read, it's got to be CWD. It affects them. And it, it scares the living hell out of me. It, it's petrifying. Instead of just loving mule deer in November and loving mule deer in March or April and loving them when it's convenient, I think this is a chance for people who are passionate to spread the word, to send out the invitation to everyone that's excited about mule deer and loves mule deer to work together. If you have maybe one Saturday evening to come to a banquet and bid on a gun and know that money is going towards the species that you love, that's awesome. Maybe you don't have enough time or the opportunity to be more involved than that, but that's awesome. To come support an event in your area, that's giving back at some capacity, and that's awesome. And maybe there's people out there that can be educated on what MFF stands for, and they can get more involved in that, and they can be involved maybe in the summertime when there's things being organized different projects that people are working on where you need manpower and muscles in the field maybe for one weekend that's all of it it's huge and i am super excited to wear the badge and wear the colors of mff and to educate other people that don't know about the great things that they're doing we can all keep reaching out and create an army to help mule deer and to and get them through whatever they're dealing with in whatever area and we can make things better for them and give back and i'm excited about that and that, that truly is. I think that embodies what the, the effort of conservation is, to recognize and mitigate those impacts, knowing that you care about this species and, and you believe that there are actions that can be difference-making in a positive and influential way for these deer to be able to not only thrive, but uh, sustain the herds that uh, we've been accustomed to knowing on the landscape. Cody, it's specific to Mule Deer Days, which is a unique event in itself in that it is an event designed to celebrate this iconic species to bring folks from the industry together, to have youth activities, to really just showcase the, the love of our hunting heritage. I've got you on the docket a couple of times. Thursday, you'll be doing a seminar, Giant Bucks. And then on Saturday, you'll be doing a seminar on Greatest Moments. Any teasers you want to put out? Again, these are free events. The entire expo event and the seminars and films, those are all part of the event and it's free to the public. The seminar schedule has already been posted on the website, but the two that you're doing or hosting in particular, any teasers that you would want to throw out for folks that may not know if they could make that, but certainly would reconsider if there was just the right info that said, yeah, I'm not going to miss that. So the giant box, that seminar, it, I'll just say I live in some of the greatest mule deer country in the entire world. And those are going to be stories that we have captured the greatest trophy hunting stories we have ever documented in my career. And they mean so much to me. I, I, I know I'm a broken record, but I love mule deer. The chance to sneak up to a giant world-class buck that everybody dreams about, it's what I live for. To lay in the grass and try to focus your eyes through the grass moving in the wind, staring at sticker points and flyers off of a massive big velvet frame or a massive big chocolate antlered buck in the rut. Those are the moments that I live for. And I'm going to share the absolute greatest moments that we have ever lived in that seminar in, in one hour. And I'm going to stand up on the stage and we're going to share the videos that we captured in those moments. And I'm going to be narrating live. It, it'll be much similar to what you see when you're watching Live to Hunt on the Outdoor Channel. But it's instead of a recorded narration, it's going to be me there telling you the story and what I was feeling in those moments and maybe some stories that weren't shared in the TV show or weren't shared that you would see on any video. Little side stories about what happened with my equipment or something to do with that deer that's never been shared. And you just tell funny little snippets 
and just add in some really cool stuff that nobody's ever heard about that particular buck or that story. I, I'm really excited about that one. It, there's some bucks in there that I, I have them in my house and I get to look up at them and it's crazy. You can walk by those deer just like anyone in their trophy room. You walk by those big old bucks and if you're not in a hurry, there's certain days where you have a chance just to stop and reflect and think about what that experience meant to you and how much mule deer mean to you. And I love going on that stage. I love going up there. I love staring out at other people that appreciate those stories and those moments. And I love coming off of that stage and people coming up to me and sharing their special stories about their giant bucks. I love it. And I, people say, oh, you're so approachable. Oh, I, I can't believe you wanted to hear my story. It, I am just like all of those people. I'm not, it's not that I'm any different. We're all passionate about mule deer. I'm really lucky to have the chance to share my stories on a huge platform on the Outdoor Channel or on YouTube or in hunting magazines. I'm just luckier. I have more of a platform to get my story to those people, but they don't really have a chance to get their story to me. And when we go to these trade shows and we come to Mule Deer Days, that's the chance for me to hear other Mule Deer hunters' stories. And I, I love that just as much walking off the stage. After they listen to mine, I love to listen to theirs. And I'm excited to come to Mule Deer Days to meet the people that are just as passionate about Mule Deer and hear what the, the big moments that they have lived. Yeah, that's going to be great, Cody. I, I know there's been uh, no way for folks to be able to recognize the amount of effort and equity that's been put into this event to really showcase and celebrate what we have already talked about, our love of mule deer. This is going to be a phenomenal event. You're going to be on hand. You'll be at the MFF booth. You'll be at the expo. And, and I know I'd be remiss if I didn't say this from my own observation and just seeing how folks interact with you. If you're thinking about coming to Mule Deer Days and you're thinking, man, I'd like to visit with Cody, I'm telling you, just walk up to him. He's very approachable. He, I, I think you're going to have a lot of folks that are going to want to visit with you, and I think uh, you're going to find that this event really does do what it was designed to do, just to be able to talk and share great stories and why we love Mule Deer, why we love hunting. And I'm looking forward to you being here. Are you driving down or are you flying? The whole family is driving down. We're bringing Sleepy, the replica of Sleepy, we're going to bring the replica of the world record, and we're going to bring some shed antlers, however many we're allowed to bring across the Canadian-U.S. border. And the whole family is coming, just so we can share those moments. And we'll set them up in the MFF booth. And the Sleepy Story has been a really popular story for us. A lot of people have watched it on YouTube, and a lot of people love to just touch base and come give me a fist pump and say, hey, man, love watching the Sleepy Story. This is a chance for people to come to the MFF booth and come and see Sleepy for himself. And you know what? You're welcome to touch them and get pictures with them. And it's, I don't know, it, that was a special journey for me. And it's really cool to be able to share it with people that, that really appreciated it. I just wanted to say, I listened to your podcast with you and Joey just a few days ago, touching on what's going to be at the Mule Deer Days and all the vendors that are going to be there and all the opportunities to win stuff. It's all super cool opportunities. Aside from meeting other people that are passionate about Mule Deer, you folks have done such a wicked job organizing cool things, cool opportunities, cool raffles, opportunities to win stuff, and the odds of winning are so great, which is cool. And to think that even if they don't win, if they, if they don't win one of the guns that you folks have up, the Bronco, I know nobody else can win the Bronco because I'm winning the Bronco, but <laughs> just the chance just to win some of that cool stuff and to know that if you don't win, that money you spent goes towards mule deer and mule deer conservation. All of it's feel good. There's no losing. There's, there's nothing negative about it. it. I'm super, super excited to be there and to meet all the folks um, cruising around, checking out all the vendors and getting their names in on all the different chances to win prizes and just there to share stories and go to seminars and listen to people speak in your podcast. You you talking about different people that are going to take the stage and the different topics that they're going to cover. And I felt like, holy crap, I'm not even going to leave the speaker stage. I want to hear these different seminars that you folks have organized because I'm very interested in them. And it's it's going to be, I feel like it's going to fly by quickly because there's so much cool stuff going on. 
Vendors will start rolling in the day that this podcast come out and then Wednesday. And then when the doors open on Thursday, man, Katie bar the door. I, uh, I anticipate this is going to be a, a show that uh, not only what we hoped it could achieve, but it's going to put it on course and build the momentum for this show to be around for a very long time and do as you just laid out. The whole point of this is to do great things for mule deer and the conservation of mule deer and that all volunteer project committee that'll be allocating these dollars to valuable projects to benefit mule deer. That there was a vacancy or a, a void that provided for this opportunity in Wyoming, not having a show like this. And uh, mule deer days is it's going to be firmly established, I believe, after next weekend when uh, folks come and see what this is. Again, we're going to continue to solicit and recruit folks to get involved. We can't do this by ourselves. This is just like we were talking about the efforts that you bring as an ambassador to to have other folks that care about mule deer, that love our hunting heritage, to come forward and be involved. Uh, That's the united effort that we we truly need as a community of sportsmen and sportswomen. And no, I'm very happy that you've been able to put this on your schedule to be here. It's going to be a great event. I'm very happy to hear you're bringing your family I've said it many times, you cannot talk conservation without talking youth. In my mind, they're synonymous. I think that uh, they go hand in our hunting heritage. I think it it really starts at the family level. I think that's where, if we talk about being united, it has to start there. And I think think you embody that well with your family. Of course, your wife, co-host of the Live to Hunt with Cody and Kelsey, being there with you, that'll be a nice addition as well. Hopefully she'll have the opportunity to be able to speak as well at some of your seminars that you're doing. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to you being here. I guess where, where I was going to go on the Bronco is I was just trying to visualize how that's going to look if you were to win the Bronco. I know. I, I heard you guys say, and it makes total sense, but I heard you guys say in your podcast that none of the MFF team members were allowed to participate in those raffles. And I was like, oh my gosh, I went and bought tickets. <laughs> but I, I totally agree. Like, And you know what? It would crush me if I wasn't allowed to win, and I would totally understand if you drew my name and said, Cody, we're not letting you take this home. I would be crushed for the simple fact that that Bronco is freaking beautiful. Oh, it, that is. It is incredible. Yeah, you've seen it firsthand at the Mile the High Hunt Expo. You're right. It's just... oh. It's a it's a beautiful. Brand. They have it no. done up so nice. Your your ticket will be in the drum, but by design, Joey, Janet, Chris, and I we we knew as staff of MFF that that would just the worst case scenario would be one of us were to win, which none of us have those type of odds. Just look at the sports teams that we all cheer for. We don't have that type of luck, but. <laughs> If one of us were by that slim Scotia of a chance, yeah, that would look bad. Yeah, they had a great Bronco, and then Joey won it. Yeah. Now, nobody would come to Mule Deer Days ever again. <laughs> I, I got a kick out of everyone telling me what a, what a great dancer Joey was, and I was I just feel like he should be allowed to participate in anything until he shows us how he can shake it. <laughs> shake it, Joey. Shake it. It'll be fun. No, Mule Deer Days. It's going to be a great event. How long of a drive is that for you? I guess where I'm going with that is I want folks to really appreciate and understand that the effort that you're putting forth to be involved and be a part of Team MF, it's not just a, it's not just a little road trip. You, there's some planning. It's, it's 14 hours. That's 90% of my life is driving. And uh, people wonder why I get so much heat from sponsors or friends or just like important people in my life. They're like, you never text me back. You never, well, it's uh, half of my life I'm driving. <laughs> I, I'm white knuckling it on some freeway somewhere, going somewhere. I don't want to look at my phone until I get there. And then when I get there, I'm doing like part of my life is just driving. And that's the way it is. And I've accepted it, but it's nothing. It's no effort. The chance to come there and just hang out with so many awesome people, I'm pumped. And I, it can't come soon enough. It's, I don't know how many sleeps away it is right now. But I know it's going to be a super fun time. It's really cool. So many trade shows that we go to are in the winter, in the off season, if you will. And it's cold weather and it's like tough traveling to know that we're coming in May and it's going to be hopefully be beautiful weather. It's super exciting. And my kids are pumped. They can't wait. Have either of your kids been to Wyoming before? They have not. So they're going to hate the drive and it's going to be torture going down there because of my little one, she's six, and she's still in a car seat where she's strapped in pretty tight. She is going to light that vehicle on fire. But when we get there, she's going to, she's a passionate little lady, and she's going to have tons of fun. And I'm sure 
they'll both have 50 new friends by the end of day one. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Come out to Mule Deer Days, meet Cody, meet his family and have a great time. That's really the ask here. I think uh, Cody and his television show, the success and uh, what he represents with Mule Deer and his past successes, I think it speaks for itself. But uh, to be able to visit with him in person, to be able to see some of the replicas of some of the more notable harvests that he's been able to bag in his career and then just his stories. I can tell you, I listened to his story when he was a speaker at the Mile High Hunt and Fish Expo in Denver, Colorado, a couple of weeks ago. Cody has got a knack for a great story. And if you enjoy good stories about hunting, the video and then these side pieces that you don't see, that truly is going to be time well spent. I think you'll find that time to be very valuable. Cody, thanks for making the time to visit with me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Safe travels to you, my friend. And uh, yeah, just keep up the great work, man. Hey, I appreciate that. And and thank you for the opportunity. And I can't wait to see you all. Cody Robbins, Live to Hunt with Cody and Kelsey. Mule Deer Days and uh, Ambassador to MFF. We are MFF. And that wraps up another episode of Wild Things and Wild Places. But remember, the journey doesn't end here. Make sure you never miss out by subscribing. Whether you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, streaming us on our website, or following us on social media, subscribing is the best way to stay connected. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more wild episodes. Everybody knows I'm a muley fanatic. <laughs>